Tonight on the Muskie Daily, Bingo Fever sweeps Muskegon's campus. April showers bring distress for baseball and softball teams. And a campus sorority hosts a colorful competition. All this and more coming up now. Thanks for joining us here on the Muskie Daily. I'm Andrew Dunlap along with Matt Triola. Muskies, clean your rooms and hide your booze. Your mom's coming! Parents and Family Weekend begins tomorrow and is a time for families to come celebrate student successes over the year. The festivities begin with the Scholarship Day Recognition Convocation at 3.15 tomorrow. Evening will also host the annual Student Talent Show at John Glenn Gym at 8.30. Other activities be happening this weekend include various honorary inductions, receptions, and presentations. WMCO partnered with Muskingum Programming Board for Campus Bingo last Friday. As part of WMCO weekend, you didn't know uh, you didn't know you needed bingo. Gave away two thousand dollars worth of prizes to students in attendance. WMCO music director Kayla Roush tells us more about some of the prizes we had. We had two Chromecasts, an iPad mini, two TVs, some printers, toolkits, gift cards, um, and then we worked with MPV, so there were like towels and pens and pencils, calculators, things that you didn't know that you needed for school that you probably wish that you had. The building was packed, setting this semester's record for the most people in attendance uh, of a bingo event. Some of the prizes were donated by WMCO underwriters. Muskegon University Greeks sponsored the Delta Gamma Theta Color 5K in a way of bringing awareness to safe haven laws. Participants ran the 5K around Muskegon's campus. Throughout the course, members of Muskegon's Greek organization sprayed colors on the runners. Many runners came to support the cause on Saturday, April 2nd. Delta member Madison Bates was pleased with the event's turnout. So we brought the Open Arms Pregnancy Center and Samuel, the House of Samuel, and they offer many options for women, as well as we're bringing information about safe haven laws. It was interesting. You had to keep your mouth closed, and it kind of inhibited your breathing, but it was fun. I'm all colorful, and the kids had a great time spraying us. So. All money raised from registration fees and donations will go to Open Arms Pregnancy Center and the House of Samuel, located in Cambridge, Ohio. Next up, the Ohio government leaders deliver State of the State Address. And still to come, the latest enter entertainment, you're watching the Muskie Daily. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad. On the scene. This is the Muskie Daily. Criminal justice leaders from across Muskegon and surrounding counties met for the annual State of the Prison Address at Muskegon University yesterday afternoon. After hearing the director of Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction, Gary Moore and several other leaders in prison reentry programs, Muskegon students from various major majors had the chance to network with professionals. It's why Noble Country County Prison Warden Timothy Buchanan says Muskegon uh, was chosen for the event. There's also opportunities for students to intern at our facilities, which is, you know, working toward academic credit. It also gives us a really good feel for potential employees who may come and uh, employ or uh, interview at our facility. And I actually have a few on my staff that are graduates from Scam University and are top notch people. So why not come here? FBI Director James Comey is opening up about how investigators unlocked an iPhone belonging to one of the San Bernardino terror attackers. Comey spoke Wednesday at an encry encryption conference at Kenyon University in Ohio. He said the government purchased a tool from a private party whose motivations he expressed is uh, confidence in. Uh, the tool, according to Comey, only works on a, quote, narrow slice of phones. 
December, two terrorists attacked an office gathering in San Bernardino, and they killed 14 people and wounded 22 others. They left behind three phones. Two were kind of cheapo phones that they smashed, and we could not recover anything from them. The third was an iPhone 5C running iOS 9, and that matters. The litigation between the government and Apple over the San Bernardino phone has ended because the government has purchased from a private party a way to get into that phone, 5C, running iOS 9. Comey also said he is working on we whether to help state and local agencies who have inaccessible iPhones. He said that if the FBI were to give such assistance, the information gathered from iPhones would be used as leads, not evidence. In Marietta yesterday, Governor John Kasich urges, urged state lawmakers to consider changing how Ohio draws its congressional districts, emphasizing his state of the state address that partisan map making needs to be in the dustbin of history. But his fellow Republicans who control the legislature and subsequently the law drawing weren't exactly swept by the idea. When we come back, Aaron and Matt discuss Batman vs. Superman on this week's One Minute Review. Stay updated on decisions being made on campus by tuning into Student Senate here on Orbit TV. Student Senate meetings air every Tuesday at 11 in the evening and Wednesdays through Sundays at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. A team led with experience, reporters forged from ethics, and a crew dedicated to bringing the knowledge. This is the Muskie Daily, the number one rated college television broadcasters in New Concord. We're back with another one of One Minute Reviews. This week, Aaron and I take a look at the latest superhero action. Batman vs. Superman came out on March 25th, and I have finally seen it. I saw it twice. It was much better the second time. I loved Batman's parts in the movie. Yeah, Ben Affleck did a great job. He did. Favorite scenes with him, of, of course, include the opening credits, and of course the scene, oh, first scene that we actually get to see Batman in the, uh, the house where he He's beating up all the villains. Oh, dude, Small car guys. chase with the Batmobile. Oh, yeah, the car chase epic. is pretty cool, yeah. Totally epic. We also got to see Wonder Woman. She was awesome. Her intro was well done. She kind of just popped in there and Another part of saved the day. Um, the music with Wonder Woman Actually, was the perfect. music was very good, that entire film. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. The ending itself, I was Spoilers. really sad. Spoilers. We won't say what they are. But no, but I'm very pleased with the ending. It's, it was satisfying because not a lot of superhero movies go with this route or this direction yeah. to end a superhero film. Critics, stop hating. All right. I'm DJ Ace. And I'm Tree. See you later. Donald Trump has put his name on lots of things. Trump steaks, Trump wine, and of course, his high rises with his name emblazed on the side. But he may not be too thrilled about having his name on a new project being sold in California. Reed Binion has that has that story in today's uh, in today's other must see video. In take a look at this. Donald Trump's approach to politics has some Republicans hoping to dump Trump either before or during the convention. But a California woman is hoping to make some extra cash with dumps for Trump. Dumps meaning dog dumps. Nobody likes picking up their dog's poops. And Trump featured on specialty bags for scooping the poop. What would kind of put a smile on my face is if I had a little bag with Donald Trump's face on it. <laughs> a somewhat more appetizing story played out in Louisville where a man who makes his living consuming obscene amounts of food put in a hard day's work on Wednesday. He devoured a nearly eight pound pizza in just 45 minutes, although he seemed to have some doubts along the way. Oh man, this is stupid. In Texas, the parking lot outside the Houston Zoo was more vicious than some of the animals inside after a dispute over a parking space led to a brawl. Fists flew, hair was pulled, and it was all caught on camera. No word yet if anyone was charged. For Take a Look at This, I'm Reed Binion. Up next, your weather and sports. We'll also find out how the weather is going to hold up parents and family weekend. We have the music. We have the cameras.
Yesterday's break in the weather is short lived as we saw rain and cold temperatures throughout today and is not going to get much better. Tonight looks to be a bit rainy with the possibility of snow forming later on in the night. The low will be 31 degrees. On Friday, the weather will warm up to around 46 where it will be cloudy with a slight chance of rain. Friday night will see temperatures dropping to 28 degrees and a mix of rain and snow being very likely. And now for your extended forecast. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad. On the scene. This is the Musky Daily. Mother Nature has reared her head again this week, forcing changes to the Muskingum baseball and softball schedules. For baseball, their game today against Pitt Greensburg has been moved for the second time this season. That game was originally supposed to be the home opener for the Muskies last month before being moved to today. The new date after the latest postponement has yet to be determined. Baseball will also move their OAC doubleheader on the road against Heidelberg scheduled for Saturday to Sunday with a 1 o'clock start. The softball team was also affected this week with their doubleheader against Wilmington originally scheduled for yesterday being postponed. That game will now be played Friday and it has also been moved from Wilmington to New Concord, giving the Muskies an extra home game. Saturday's softball doubleheader against Heidelberg is still on the books for now, but with snow in the forecast Saturday morning, we'll see if that game actually remains there. Women's golf was also canceled for this weekend. The women were supposed to go on the road to the Ohio Wesleyan Invitational Saturday and Sunday, but due to schedule conflicts, the team will no longer compete this weekend. One of the only Muskie sports to actually see the field this week was the men's lacrosse team. The Muskies fell in their OAC opener against Mount Union 14-4 in alliance. Ian McGugan led the attack with two of the four Muskie goals, while David DeGood and Tucker Haas each added a goal apiece. The loss drops the Muskies to 2-6 overall and 0-1 in the OAC. The team will be back in action on Saturday when they host Otterbein in a conference battle. The Pittsburgh Pirates took on the St. Louis Cardinals in the opening week of the baseball season as the season got underway. Let's pick things up in the bottom of the fifth inning. Pittsburgh up 1-0 as John Jaso sends a deep fly off the right field wall and he's going to go all the way to third base on a triple. A throwing error by Colton Wong ended up bringing Jaso home for a run, putting the score as 2-0 Pirates. Going to the bottom of the fifth, Pittsburgh still up 2-0. Francisco Cervelli with a two-RBI double, scoring David Fries and Starling Marte to put the Pirates up 4-0. In the top of the sixth, 4-0 Pittsburgh, Jeremy Hazelbaker with a solo shot off of Juan Nisacasio over into right center field, giving the, giving the Cardinals a 4-1 to one deficit. And in the bottom of the sixth, Pan the Pittsburgh answers back with Sean Rodriguez with an RBI double to re left field, scoring Jordy, Jordy Mercer, putting the Pirates up 5-1, to one, where that will be the final. Pittsburgh coming away with the sweep in the opening series of the season. Now over to golf at the Masters Par 3 contest. 80-year-old Gary Player on the seventh hole, taking the chip shot, and it bounces around on the green a couple of times and starts to roll back nice and slow, just taking its time over there, going over to the hole, and it'll eventually keep rolling until it finds the bottom of the cup for the ace. With that hole, Gary Player becomes the oldest player to sink a hole-in-one at the Masters Par 3 contest as he takes home the play of the day. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Muskie Daily. See you next week.